In this video, I'm going to cover how to use some of Scribe's newer connectors, and that would be in the data services uh, arena. So what we've done is, as you know, with Scribe, we've got a platform that people can build um, connectivity on top of that is displayed in our marketplace or can be privately deployed. So we've got a few extras, new ones that are um, are kind of outside the scope of what we used to do in the in the realm of, of data integration. Um, that's Melissa Data and inside view. So these are data services, which essentially means that I can pass data in and they can give me, you know, zip plus four data. I can get enriched um, lead data. Each one has its own specialty, but what I'll do in this case, is I'll talk about inside view, but the same design approach works for any of the, the data services that Scribe um, has or will work with. So basically what I've got is the ability to um, either batch or real-time enrich data. So I'm going to start with batch because it's a little easier to understand. The real-time will use our request reply services uh, and I can cover that as well. But basically I'm going to have a map that is going to do an enrichment on accounts. So in this case I'm going to query dynamic CRM. I'm going to grab account data and I want to pass that through my inside view um, data enrichment services. So I can see on the source side I've got CRM. On my target I've got inside view. And I've got my enrich. Now, depending on the the connector that you're working with, um, they may have different names for this. It might be you know enrich, enhance, whatever it is. It's going to be tied to that specific connector. But again, this use case is going to be similar, where I've got an enriched um, lead result object. And if I look at the field mappings here, a lot of things are in italics. Now, in Scribe kind of lingo, italics means read only. I can also see that by looking at the properties and seeing that that is a read-only field. So what I want to do is scroll down until I can find some fields that aren't in italics. And I can see for the inside view connector, they all start with the word query. This means I can have to provide some set of these values um, to get my enriched data result. So in this case, I'm mapping company name, but I could also additionally map, I could map city, um, I could map country. So I can map additional parameters over to get a, a more tightly um, known result. But really what I'm doing in this case is I'm doing all this work to give that data enrichment service some information about what I'm looking for, the the record, the lead, the email address, what have you, um, that I want to get all these fields and italics are going to come back from that data service. So how do you do something with that? Now there is no, um, you know, I don't, I don't call that and then automatically everything gets updated to CRM. I have to map that data back and that's where you see this update account step coming from. What I'm doing here is I'm mapping all the result fields from that enrichment. So with Scribe Online, we've got this concept of backfill or the result set. So every time I do a create or an update, I have the ability to leverage the data that was passed in and created and generated uh, on further steps. A lot of times this is used when you're doing the integration with say accounts and contacts. Um, that I have a contact that has to relate to the account, so I can use the ID of the account that was just generated, pass it into the contact, and it creates that relationship. That's been historically the reason why you use these these kind of backfilled um, values. With data enrichment services, it's a little bit different because we're handing off in that that operation, that block, a couple of fields saying account name, company name, uh, email address, whatever. It's going to give us back a lot more data around that. And then again, it's just a drag and drop to map that data across. So if I want to map additional values, um, let's take for example, I've got a whole bunch of fields in my account object here. I've got account number. Maybe I want to store that company ID in the account number. So I drag that across and now I'm creating the relational link between what came back from that data enrichment service and what I'm going to pass back into Dynamic CRM. So that works for anything. So if I want to enrich some data, I can leverage it in any block that comes after it. The hierarchy is incredibly important here because if I move this update account above the enrich, you can see it immediately gives me an error message. And if I hover over that, it's going to tell me that all those formulas are invalid because I haven't called that enrichment yet. So if I move it back, it fixes everything. So anything that happens above the block, you have contextual awareness of. So if I have 15 steps going down this line, they're all going to have access to that same uh, enrichment data. 
Now, real-time integration is a little bit different because of how we work with a request reply. And what we're doing here is instead of doing an update, so I have no direct connection to CRM, this really could be called from anywhere because it's just calling out to my, my REST endpoint that I've created and it's going to pass over my company name. And essentially what happens is the exact same thing. I have my Enrich's account. I've mapped over that name to my company name field. And then what's going to happen is that that result set is still what I'm capturing. But what I'm doing is I'm building a reply out of that to send back to my calling service. So you can see here, I've mapped again, all those result fields, I've mapped to that, that responding service. This is going to be done through some JavaScript. So I'm going to pass this back to CRM. It's going to take that value and update the form uh, when, I've, when I call out to that service. But the same principle applies that I need to feed the data into that enrichment block uh, for my data services and capture the resulting data that comes out of it. Now what this looks like in the real world in action, if I go to CRM, uh, I can open up, let's take Arizona State University. So I've got no phone number, no city, um, no information around this record. And what I do is when I open it up, it's going to call out dynamically to that, that scribe rest endpoint that I have set up. And you can see the form's going to alert you that it's searching and then it's going to bring that data back. What this means is that I can embed this into any of my applications and bring back that enrichment data. So you can see here now it's been fully populated and I can go back to my account screen and see that it's been persisted and saved. So it's kind of nice that I can build with that request reply service um, the ability to have this be a kind of a, a on demand as I work through my day. It's going to fill in the, the gaps. I could also do my batch enrichment. So I'm going to run this guy. This would morally be something you would set up on a schedule. So maybe every every two months, every month, you want to go through and just anything, any records that haven't been enriched in a while, um, pass it through the enrichment service, pass it through those data cleansing layers, because it's going to allow your, your teams that are working inside this app, um, CRM, Salesforce, whatever it might be, gives them the ability to have this data always just be up to the, up to date. They don't have to worry about, you know, has it been six weeks? Has something changed? Uh, when I refresh the screen, you can see that now I've got a lot more data in here. So it's going to go through on an automated basis and just auto refresh all my data. And I can, again, I can do that. Um, the same methodology for the integration approach is the resulting fields that come back from that enrichment layer. That's what I want to map in. And I can do that for any of the data service providers that scribe, um, is working with now or will be adding to the marketplace in the future.